We are going to talk about transfusion reactions. So the way I will do this is, since this is a surgical topic, I will go through each of these quickly. There's one, two, three, four. One, two, no, there's more. One, two, three, five. There's five transfusion reactions. So I will go through each of these, telling all the important points. The first one is an allergic or anaphylactic reaction. This is a type blank hypersensitivity reaction. What is the blank? Allergic reactions are type what? Hypersensitivity reactions. There's one, two, three, four. Okay, it's a type one hypersensitivity reaction. What happens here is you have the donor's blood. Okay, this is how I'm going to draw the donor's blood. And inside the blood, you have plasma proteins. You have plasma proteins. Within minutes, minutes to two to three hours of transfusion, the patient can develop an anaphylactic or allergic reaction. Okay. So what is the type of cell that degranulates? Um, releasing all the anti-inflammatory products, the inflammatory products, histamine and those stuff. Guys, answer. These are mast cells. They will degranulate. They degranulate. against these plasma proteins. This is usually seen in a patient who has got repeat transfusions. So if you remember what uh, hypersensitivity reaction type one is, you need to be exposed to it first. And then the body produces all these um, antibodies against the product. So the next time the blood comes in, It'll degranulate. Okay. Can someone tell me the symptoms of an allergic reaction? Guys, what are the symptoms of allergic reactions? Mm -hmm. What is that? Okay, I miss Shashank right now. Okay. Yeah, utricaria, then uh, pruritus. Utricaria, if you want to write that. Uh, anaphylaxis. So the anaphylactic syndromes are hypotension. There can be respiratory arrest. And even shock. Okay. I will explain this. Oh, okay. So what happens here is <clears throat> in a donor's blood, there are specific plasma proteins. Okay. And those plasma proteins can stimulate a type one hypersensitivity reaction or an allergic reaction. So a type one allergic reaction can cause itchiness, 
difficulty breathing, then uh, the symptoms of hypertension. So the anaphylactic symptoms are below, hypertension, respiratory arrest, and shock. Shock is when the blood is not inside the blood vessels. The, okay? So basically your blood pressure is going to drop. Whenever the blood pressure drops, you call it shock, okay? Because if the blood is or the fluid is outside, you call it shock. Mass, this degranulation releases histamine, which increases capillary permeability. Uh, so I went further than I thought I would. Okay, these are some basic stuff that you need to know. Next, regarding this, IgA deficient patients should receive blood products without IgA. Okay, uh, there's a I, <coughs> there's a syndrome where IgA is deficient in people, and those people must receive blood without IgA. You need to filter out the IgA. Okay. The next reaction is an acute hemolytic transfusion reaction. This is basically the ABO incompatibility. So if you give the wrong blood group, what is going to happen? And this is a type two hypersensitivity reaction. Okay. But this in blood, if you have A antibodies and you give the patient B blood, this is A. Uh, Sorry, I made a mistake. B blood. And if you give the patient A blood, okay? This patient's red blood, uh, the donor's red blood cells will have A. The symptoms manifest during transfusion. or less than 24 hours after the transfusion, okay? So what happens is there's going to be blood destruction. The A will react with the anti-A. and the blood cell will be destroyed. My question is, okay, I did it. It's, an, it's a type of intravascular hemolysis. The hemolysis, the destruction of the red blood cell occurs within the blood vessels. Okay, so you have fever. I will give time to write hypotension, tachypnea, increased breathing rate, 
tachycardia. So the word tachy is a reference to increased speed. Okay, you will hear about this in uh, microbiology for tachyzoids, which is basically the malaria form, which is actively dividing. And then bradyzoids, which are low speed, which are not dividing. Okay, then bradycardia, uh, just know what that prefix is. Tachycardia increased heart rate. And hemoglobin urea. And you can have jaundice. Okay. Jaundice is a sign of extravascular hemolysis. Okay. So if you give the wrong type of blood, the person will suddenly develop fever, low blood pressure, increased breathing rate, increased heart rate, and there will be hemoglobin in urine. That means the blood, it's going to appear red, okay? And sometimes you can get jaundice, okay? If it is a severe reaction. The next one, is febrile, non-hemolytic transfusion reaction. This is the next one. In this case, what happens is, this is very simple. When you store blood, when you are storing blood, the white blood cells release cytokines. Okay. Cytokines are, okay, uh, cytokines are substances released. Uh, this is just for those who don't know what these are. Released by white blood cells to start inflammation, start or maintain inflammation. Okay. This is what cytokines are. Basically anything that is released by the white blood cells in their fight. Okay. Uh, So what happens is when you have blood in storage, the white blood cells in the blood are going to release cytokines. It's in an unusual environment. So it's going to release cytokines. And then one to six hours after giving the transfusion, one to six hours after giving the transfusion, the patient can develop fever, headache, Chills, flushing, basically the five, five signs of inflammation, okay? Because the cytokines such as, okay, IL-1, uh, don't write this, IL-1, it stimulates fever and so on, okay? So the way to prevent this is you remove as much white blood cells as you can. Okay, leuco means white. And in this case, WBC.
the next one is the main one. This is the most important one to understand and the most deadliest. This is a very serious condition, okay? Transfusion related acute lung injury. Transfusion related acute lung injury. T-R-A-L-I. So similar to some cancers, this is also a two hit hype, uh, two hit mechanism. Okay. If you know the retinoblastoma cancer, the way it develops, it's a two hit cancer. You need two things to happen before the disease starts. So the first hit is endothelial injury. Okay, uh, just write it. I will explain that. Do you have, okay. So what happens is due to some reason, there is endothelial damage, okay? Due to whatever cause, uh, hypertension, whatever it is, there is endothelial damage, okay? And then neutrophils come Let's say an infection happened and the endothelium was damaged. The neutrophils come and get sequestered. That means they stay there. And primed. Neutrophils. Okay, I will explain what this is. Uh, you can write it below. Stir means to collect. Okay. In a location. Primed it means it's it's going to react. Okay, sorry. Primed means it's going to react to even a weak signal. Okay, this is what sequestered and primed means. Then comes the second hit. Neutrophils. Activate due to a factor in transfused blood. Okay, this is the second hint. Uh, I'm going to move it a bit here. And then at least I need someone to type the answer for this. The neutrophils are going to produce cytokines. Okay. Around the lung, it is going to produce cytokines. What is going to be the end result? What do you call that? When it produces cytokines, what is going to happen?
Okay, so you get increased capillary permeability. Then what happens? Guys, you get pulmonary edema, which is very similar to pneumonia. Um, so basically what happens is when the neutrophils get activated because of something in blood, in the blood which was given, they're going to produce a lot of cytokines. And in the lungs, there's going to be pulmonary edema. Basically all the fluids start accumulating. Okay, now COVID, COVID, uh, the flu, Blue, sorry. Influenza, uh, influenza. All of these can cause pneumonia, which is basically fluid starts accumulating inside the lung. And these patients are not normal people, not people who are walking around. These patients are usually in the ICU. Okay, so the risk of death is very high in this condition, okay? So during a transfusion of a patient in the ICU, if they develop this, the risk of death is very high. The final transfusion reaction is delayed trans hemolytic transfusion reaction. I hope this is clear. If you have any questions, please ask, even if it is in the chat. Okay. So what happens here is there is a, a hemolytic reaction against minor foreign antigens antigens, such as the uh, RH factor. Now let's talk about what happens if you give the wrong RH factor, which the body, this is important, has previously encountered. So I think Prashant talked about uh, hemolytic disease of newborn. Now we are talking about the adult version of this. Okay, what happens if you give an adult uh, blood which is RH non-compatible? So let's say in the donor blood, you have the RH factor. Always, after 24 hours, body, the spleen, slowly destroys the RBC. Okay? It slowly destroys the RBC. It's not going to destroy all of it. Whatever it can, it destroys. Okay? And this is self-limited, you can have a mild fever, and since it's extravascular, the destruction is in the spleen, you can have hyperbilirubinemia. That means uh, it predisposes the person to jaundice. Okay, you can develop jaundice. So this is uh, it for the learning part. Let's do the four questions, okay? Give me a second, I need to get the questions.
Okay, guys, try the first question. Send me the answer. Uh, at least two people send me the answer and I will discuss. Yes, correct. Okay. Dilshan and Nisha, correct. Kritika, correct. Okay. I'm going to discuss this. A 60 year old man comes with progressive fatigue. He doesn't have any chest pain, shortness of breath, but he has hypertension and obesity. His severe obesity. Examination shows mucosal pallor. Hemoglobin is 8.6. MCV, it's usually, it's a normocytic anemia. I told oh, normocytic. Can go into a microcytic. Okay. Reticulocytes are 0.2. Platelets and white blood cell count is normal. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? This, the MCV, must be greater than 100. Okay. Occult blood loss. That means loss of blood, usually through bleeding in the GI system. You can't see this. Okay. Uh, non visible blood. Extravascular hemolysis, there has to be jaundice. Okay. This is anemia of chronic inflammation due to the obesity. Uh, next question. Send the answer. Yeah, you are correct. Adil Shani and Kritika, correct? Sharud, correct? Nisha, correct? Let's discuss. A 65 year old woman comes to the ER due to worsening hypertension. She has end stage renal disease and anemia due to chronic kidney disease. And currently receiving erythropoietin and iron supplementation. This is a normal regimen. Sasanga did these, okay, long time. Blood pressure is elevated. Okay. Uh, patient has bilateral retinal hemorrhages. Usually, it could be due to diabetes. Uh, yeah, you can see the patient has diabetes. Okay. The normal value is less than 120 milligrams per deciliter. Which of the following is the most likely cause of this patient's hypertension? Answer is erythropoietin therapy. I discussed this, okay? And uh, I will uh, tell you one thing. These are considered the hard questions where only, I think around 7% got the correct answer. Uh, I actually removed a lot of details in the question. Next question. Okay, this one I got. Okay, let's see. Uh, Sharud and Dilshani, correct? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, you guys are correct. Uh, the other, let's check the answer again. Immature erythroblasts, teardrop like erythrocytes. The moment you see this, you should know the answer. Dry bone marrow tap. Uh, I didn't talk about this yet, but when we do, we will talk about it. It's myelofibrosis. Okay. Uh, myelofibrosis. Myelodysplastic syndrome, that's a big topic. We need to talk about it later on. After uh, a acute, ALL, usually, okay? Acute, uh, after blood cancers, white blood cell cancers. Next one.
Oh, let me try. Yeah. Uh, Sharud Dilshani, correct? Maybe one more answer. Correct, Nisha, correct. So yeah, a 15 year old girl has mucosal bleeding and petechial rashes, low platelets. She has been feeling tired lately, anemia. Hemoglobin, this. white blood cell counts are also reduced and platelet counts. Blood film morphology was unremarkable. Reticulocytes are absent. Okay. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? To have reticulocytes, you should have a functioning bone marrow. And the answer here is aplastic anemia. Myelofibrosis, they have to mention teardrop cells somewhere. Okay. They have to talk about the morphology. Next one. Yes, correct, Dilshani. This is a PLAP question. And I put this because there's something very typical about PLAP questions. Anisha, correct? Okay. Let's discuss this one. 25 year old man presents with rapid symptoms of anemia and jaundice following treatment of malaria. Okay. He's noted to have Heinz bodies on a blood pill. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? This is G6PD deficiency. We discussed this in my previous, uh, the last lecture. Uh, the thing about PLAB questions are they have these buzzwords or these pathomemonic words. Okay, they always, that's why they call this exam easy. They always give you these buzzwords. So uh, if you remember, wait, if you remember, I gave you one buzzword here. You see this, you know the answer, okay? And for this exam, they will always tell you this, okay? So uh, yeah, that is it for the lecture. We are done with red blood cells. We have done literally everything there is about red blood cells. And we are going to start platelets in the next class. Um, so if you have any questions, you can ask. And also my, just a recommendation because someone asked me this question.